Good morning, Marcus. How the heck are you doing today? Doing great, Chris. Happy to be back. Oh, excited to be back. So I'm an old school Power BI guy. I've done a lot of stuff with like Power Query and M and using data flows and that type of thing. But we've just introduced this new thing called pipelines and fabric. Can you help me understand what the what a pipeline is and why I'd use it? Yeah, absolutely. So what Microsoft has done is they've taken the functionality of Azure Data Factory and those pipeline resources and integrated that into Microsoft Fabric. So the capabilities to orchestrate and move data and do transformations now exist in a pipeline format within Microsoft Fabric. All right, well, I, I guess I'm still just a little bit confused. Can you show me how this works? Absolutely, let's head over to my screen. Awesome. So here we are on the Fabric homepage, and for today's video, we're going to go into the Synapse Data Engineering uh, module here. Okay. And to create your first data pipeline, uh, you're going to select the data pipeline option at the top of the data engineering page. As with any other Fabric resource, you're going to give it a name. So I like to use uh, some acronyms here, or not acronyms, some abbreviations, uh, some standard abbreviations for my pipeline name. So I'm gonna start out with PL. And in this case, we're gonna show a data movement pipeline. So I'm gonna preface that with PL underscore data. And then it's gonna be a copy task. And we're gonna take data from a data lake storage, um, excuse me, a blob storage, and move that to our lake house. So I'm going to abbreviate that with LH. That's going to be the name of my pipeline. Okay. I'm going to hit create. And we're going to get taken into our pipeline UI experience. Now, for those of you that are familiar with maybe Synapse pipelines or familiar with Azure Data Factory, the UI in Fabric is a little bit different, uh, but the functionality is mainly the same. So at the top here, we have our home ribbon. Um, things like validate, run, schedule. Uh, so again, the ability to schedule your pipelines uh, and have that be on a set frequency that you want to run those, whether that be daily, hourly, uh, every minute, um, et cetera. You have some built-in logging uh, as well. So once we actually create our pipeline and add some activities in there, we'll be able to view our run history and go back and see you know, which, which of our runs succeeded versus failed and be able to go into some of the debugging that you can do within your pipeline. Okay. So some of the main activities that they list here uh, at the top, some quick picks, uh, copy data, uh, data flow, notebook, lookup, and invoke pipeline. Uh, so those are the things that are available here on that home ribbon. If you go to the activities uh, ribbon at the top, this is going to give you the full list of activities that are available to add into your pipelines. Now, again, most of these mirror Synapse pipelines, Azure Data Factory pipelines, in terms of the activities available. Chris, it's interesting. I did notice a couple of uh, newer ones, such as Outlook and Teams that they've added into Fabric that uh, those don't exist in those other platforms. So kind of cool to see a couple new activities that they've uh, incorporated into Fabric exclusively. And one of the things I have heard about the the new pipelines that's in Fabric is it's designed to be the amalgam of like the Azure Data Factory and uh, just like a new, more user friendly Data Factory functionality. So it would make sense that they'd start to pull in things like uh, Office 365 and Teams, so that you know you could send emails, I would imagine, or send send Teams messages. So that makes a ton of sense. 
And then just continuing on, if you hit the drop down here next to the plus icon, you can see the remaining activities that that don't make it into the top menu here. So you do have some additional options uh, if you hit that drop down on the right. Oh, that's cool. Continuing on the home ribbon here uh, on the run tab, these are just the same activities that existed or the same options than the home tab. They just organized it there for, for the run. Mm. And then for view, uh, you have a couple of zoom uh, options and auto align so when you start to add multiple activities into your pipeline you can hit that auto align and it formats it nicely for you and make sure everything is lined up appropriately and then can you go back to oh okay keep going i'm just gonna say and then once you have a pipeline created it's kind of nice you can view the the back end json code that this pipeline object is stored in um so again within fabric the Pipeline objects are getting stored the same way they were in Synapse, uh, which is just a, a long nested JSON uh, file that stores all of your code. So can can I get this right? Because I, I think it's now starting to come together, right? Like, so when we talk about pipelines, we're talking about how data goes from one place to another, and we can use these pieces of pipe to guide that data as it goes along and potentially like branch it out or split it out and do different things with it. Is that right? Absolutely. I, the two main functionalities I would say, Chris, with, with pipelines are again, orchestration. Uh, so scheduling, um, organizing your tasks and activities of those data movement activities. So, and then the second okay. is what I just mentioned, moving data from one place to the next um moving uh data from one stage to the next stage in your data architecture oh that's fantastic uh you know maybe next time we could go deeper into uh like maybe how to just copy some data that sounds good to me come on back for the next video and we'll show you how to do that all right we'll see you then